Hey, this is Ron with Bridgecom Systems. Uh, we do a lot of commercial operations here at uh, Bridgecom, and what I have on display right now is a three-channel LTR trunk system. Three repeaters for a commercial application. Uh, as you can see, I've labeled the repeaters numbers two, six, and eight, and I've got three controllers that we sell, our LTR controller. They're arrayed side by side. This is actually corresponding to repeater number two, and we got repeater number six and repeater number eight. And I just wanna walk you guys through uh, the setup for this arrangement so that you're better equipped when you make your purchase to know what you're doing. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to focus real quick on the arrangement of the controllers. Okay. And this is extremely important. And what I want you to see is the controllers are daisy chained together with this, this Cat 5e networking cable. And they need to go in series. You've got two, you've got six, and you got eight. Okay. Now, the, the bus that transports this information is an RS-485 bus and it requires terminators. The terminating resistors are located behind the voltage regulator, okay? They're labeled uh, J, J16 through J20. The jumpers need to be installed on the ends of the bus. And in this case, you got repeater two and you got repeater eight. So the ends of the bus need to be, uh, they need to have the jumpers installed. And as you can see, repeater six doesn't, six doesn't have any jumpers installed. And you can see from the front, I've got, I'll just take this off real quick. You can see that the sync light is lit on all controllers. In other words, they're all synced up. And in this case, the sync master is number two. So if I were to disconnect number two, the sync would go off, except on this one, okay? The sync light went off on the other ones because they're no longer in the chain. So if I put it back in, they'll all sync back up. I'll take that one off. He loses sync, okay? So you want to make sure you're all synced up and the master is providing sync. You'll notice that when I take this one out, it goes out. Now, if I pull this one out, both of them should go because he's they're in line there. So it's a series connection, okay? So that's, that's very important. You have to have these jumpers installed on the ends of the bus, no matter what the cable lengths are, okay? And it's ideal that you use as short as possible. These are okay. RS-485 allows for decent lengths of cable, but you definitely want to keep them as short as possible, okay? The second, <clears throat> the second thing that's important is the alignment of the controller to the repeater. Now, I've already aligned these... Uh, repeaters to these controllers and I'm just going to show you what some key points are that you need to focus on and the primary on the receive side the primary thing to be concerned about is what's happening on test point two okay now test point two is the actual data as it's been filtered by the audio signal processor this is the actual this is the data that the microprocessor sees okay the microprocessor has to decode this LTR data and it has to be of such a level that it can see enough of it. So I've got over here on the oscilloscope what that signal is looking like. Okay, I've got it set up for a couple hundred millivolts per division uh, and one volt, I'm sorry, uh, a sweep speed of 200 milliseconds and uh, one volt per division. So I'm going to actually handshake with the controller number two and I wanted you to see what this looks like on the, from the receive side. So you'll notice this data coming in. Now you see that that data level is close to about 2 volts peak to peak. And you want, you want it to be enough so that you can... Oops, I just... Okay, there I keyed it. Okay, that's, that's good data. Now you'll notice if, as I adjust P2... I can either increase that, like that, which you don't want. You can see how it kind of mucks it up. And then you want to, you can squash it down to where it gets smaller. And it's still decoding pretty even good down there. But let's see if you can even make a handshake at that level. See, it's hard to do. So you have to get some more level there. Okay, so this is very important to have enough level at this point. I recommend about that, if you can watch that on the scope, okay. You want basically one handshake attempt like you're seeing right there. That's ideal, okay? So this is on trans or on the receive side. Now, another way to check your work is to go over here to TP6. And TP6 is what's called a dynamic DC adjust. You want this level to be around two and a half volts as seen over here on the oscilloscope. 
what this is doing is it's actually it's trying to optimize where the level is and you use pot one to tweak this so you can adjust pot one and you want this to be around two and a half volts Let's see. well you want to get a okay that's, that's so they're somewhere in that range you can see as it's trying to adjust and center the data because oftentimes this is what what this is doing is it's fixing frequency error that might be coming in on the transmitting radios that are it's a it allows for the controller to work with a lot of different radios of all kinds that may be a little bit off frequency a lot off frequency so it's doing its best to accommodate a lot of radios because as radios are in the field they tend to age and some of them are off 500 hertz at times unless you're taking good care of your radios but you're, this allows for the controller to to handle a lot of different variability which is going to happen by the way so that's that's the receive side now the transmit side is just as important because you want the data to be visible by the uh, radios that are trying to handshake now I'm going to key up this is the actual data that's generated by our controller that's going into the transmitter of the repeater now that signal level is getting sent over here to this uh, to this input and on our repeater in this case you can actually see this level let me just tune this real or get to where I can show you this you've got this test point on our accessory board now we use three volt three volt levels on all of our equipment in these new repeaters so this signal is designed to where you got your data coming out of your controller going into your repeater and it needs to be right around 1.5 volts you got uh, there's zero one two and three so if this were centered a little bit better you want to put this right in the middle okay and this gets you this you want you want to watch this handshake you got your receive you want this thing to pop up almost immediately and I mean if I'm transmitting real close to it, it you can interfere with the signaling but see how that works that's how fast you want to see this happen is a handshake see? and you can see the radio or the repeater corresponding okay so <clears throat> You can also then on the service monitor look at your output frequency and your data deviation and then you can, this is a narrow band system so five, that's a little hot so I want to back this down just a touch. So let me get five, that's a little, probably add another. Check one, two, three, four, five. I mean, this will obviously be tested further, but the uh, with the, with the signal tone. But you want to clearly be, you know, believe be below, you know, be within spec. But that's important. You've got your the things that we're seeing is that you've got to make sure your jumpers are installed properly, your uh, controllers are aligned correctly with your repeater. You've got to take into account your repeater's attack time. Um, our software allows for you to adjust <clears throat> the TX lead-in delay so that you can wait for the transmitter to come up. Right now our repeaters are coming up and they're on frequency within 25 milliseconds and that's the value we have set. So they're data ready within 25 milliseconds. So that's, that allows for quick handshake attempts. Okay. Well, anyway, anyway, what we have on display is a three-channel trunk system using the LTR controllers. We invite you to check us out on our website at bridgecomsystems.com. You can call us uh, at 816-532-8451 to learn more about these, but we do support LTR. We can get you a system from scratch or replace some existing controllers. We work with virtually anybody's repeater. So we look forward to working with you. And my, again, my name's Ron. I'm the owner of Bridgecom Systems. I've also been doing this for a long time. So I, you know, I, I do know what I'm talking about. 
and we invite you to you know partner with us on any projects you have. Thank you so much. Invite you know invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more information and get updates as well as looking at our Facebook page. Seven three.